Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. By far the most popular video that I've introduced is the video on single rope rappel on the Munter friction hitch. It turns out that as saddle hunters are learning more and more about safety, they are taking to the ropes. And, and the first uh, step in your journey is folks are realizing that rappel is the easiest way out of a tree. And so I'm eager to share everything I know about the ropes and acclimate you to the ropes because the more familiar you are with being attached by a rope, the more comfortable you'll be adopting other more safe ways of climbing like rope climbing. Get, get comfortable with rappel, get comfortable with that feeling of just being attached to a rope. You're more apt to then entertain concepts like SRT or double stationary rope climbing. So, if you have watched my videos, one of the things that I espouse is that I don't ever want to be dependent upon anything which you can drop. And that's why I like to, and I repel on a Munter friction hitch formed with the carabiner that is on my bridge. A lot of other devices require you to have them loose in hand in order to put them on. And I don't like that because you can drop them. So I've been working with our friends out at Rock and Arbor, and we've got a device here, the Omega Pacific SBG. And I'm gonna show you in close detail how we can use this for a uh, single rope rappel. We'll do a separate video on a doubled rope rappel. All right, let's get a really good look at the device. So here we are with the Omega Pacific logo facing us. And if I flip it around towards the right, you see the U grooves and therefore the larger diameter ropes and I flip it the other direction you see the V grooves I use that for eight millimeter the first feature that I really like about this is that I can tether it to me so here I've got six feet 183 centimeters of power cord closed in a hunter's bend I can just girth hitch this on and I can girth hitch that onto my saddle and I can ensure that I will not drop this. So it's always ready for me. And so I'll go ahead and I'll do that. When attaching your tether, and you can do this a million ways, but I just use, again, a loop of power cord. Better than a girth hitch. You know, I'll, I'll just use a girth hitch, right? That, that is fine, but it's not stable in that it can pop off in your bag, right? It could just pop off and get loose. So it's better to use a double girth hitch, also known as a double ring hitch or a tag knot, double tag knot. So if I'm going to be using 9.5 millimeter rope in this fashion, I want to be using the end with the Omega Pacific logo. Well, I'll put my tether on the other side here because I won't be using it. I don't want to use the middle hole because that takes some friction with the rope passing through it. So I simply put the tether through. I create a girth hitch with the power cord and pass the entire thing through. So that is what we call a double girth hitch and it will secure it in place. Now, you might climb the tree any way imaginable. Most folks are stick climbers and that's great. I just encourage you to tie in and I mean a lifeline on zero slack. I'm gonna do this demonstration using uh, rope climbing. Okay, so I want to do this rappel today on two different ropes. This is eight millimeter Sterling Oplux. Eight millimeters is probably the most popular diameter for rappel. And I've also got a 9.5 millimeter or three eighths inch rope. Uh, I am going to just get a throw ball up in this tree and then I'll see you as I self film this from the canopy. Okay, now if you are learning how to repel, I urge you to realize that anytime you do something aloft for the first time, you've got to really do so carefully. And so I always recommend that you work out your business near the ground, where the only thing that's going to happen is you could bruise your backside if you fall one or two feet. So when I'm, when I'm testing anything out like this device, I'm going to make sure I get the details all worked out here on the ground. So I'll go over the actual rigging, but I just want to show you here, right? I've got about two and a half feet between my backside and the ground, right? And so 
if I screw something up here, that's as far as I can fall. And this is how my rappel sequence goes. I break my friction hitch while holding load, and I feel, wow, that's, that's, that's a little bit too much tension here. I am going to, I'm gonna need more resistance. So one of the things I like about the device is it's got various ways with which we can adjust the, the friction. So let's get in close and I'll show you the device in detail. Engage it this way around the back and I always use triple action locking carabiners. You can find this carabiner and others like it on my website jrbtreeclimbing.com also available at a discount from Rock and Arbor. The device comes with a great set of instructions and you can look at those instructions in terms of how it's used in both belay mode and in rappel mode and these two diagrams in the lower right hand side that's exactly how I use it for a doubled rope rappel which is not in this video and a single rope rappel as demonstrated here. Although the middle hole can be used for certain applications I have not found it to be optimal for use with rappel and so it will not be used in the video today. We're only going to be using one side of this because it is a capable of working with two ropes but we'll be just using one and the method by which I have arrived at as being optimal is putting the rope through the slot and then the carabiner I'm sorry I put the rope through the slot and around the body and the carabiner in the bottom hole I, I found that to be optimal now we the device itself is asymmetrical it has a v-shaped groove on one side and a u-shaped groove on the other side the v-shaped groove works best for eight millimeter rope and the u-shaped groove works best for the 3 8 inch rope or larger and so this being eight millimeter rope here's how i will affix it i will put it through around the body put my carabiner through the bottom and in a hunting situation yeah we'd be really careful about not having uh, any extra clinking and clanking but it is it is metal on metal so that's possible so we'll just want to be as quiet as 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 possible but when you're testing your rappel right see i'm just standing here at the at the base of the tree i can i can test everything from here so i've broken my friction hitch and i am holding tension here and i want i don't want that to be really difficult i want it to be pretty easy and it is so let's bring this down a little bit and see I'm just executing a one two foot rappel if I screw something up right I'm not falling very far all right I'm gonna run up there and just so you understand how I'm climbing this is the Longhorn agile hitch this is the JRB guard hitch foot loop I'm doing basically an old-school SRT JRB style but I've got redundancy right I've got redundant bridges I've got two points of connection to the rope and I'm going up about 25 feet and I'll see you in the canopy okay so here we are in the canopy I'm about 25 feet up okay so real quick look up there's my anchor and my anchor is my maverick hitch and it's currently locked I'm gonna remove that carabiner to unlock it so that I can retrieve the system the red friction hitch is Longhorn Agile I will be breaking that with my right hand and that will be out of your field of view but you can picture that pretty easily I want you to keep your eye on what's going on here so here is the device the SBG and I've got it tethered on to me so when I'm using eight millimeter rope I want the V that's the V side you can see the V side versus the U side I've put my girth hitch on just to keep me from ever making a mistake I have it on this on this side and it always allows me to orient this properly and so the orientation so I've got the, the logo side away from me and I'll put it through like this now I run two bridges a double adjustable bridge you might only run a single bridge and this is still possible on 
a single bridge. But I urge you to consider a double bridge because you always want to be tied to the tree. If you remove your primary bridge to affix your rappel device, you're not actually attached at that time. Accidents can happen at any point in time. Now, as I put it here, this would give inadequate friction for rappel. And so we're going to run it in a different mode. I think they call this figure eight mode, where we pop this around. And I put the carabiner through the bottom hole. Okay? So I'm gonna have you, I'm gonna take all the slack out. You can see slack goes in, slack comes out. I'll take all the slack out, and then I will be, this is my brake hand, I'll be pushing that away from me. Now, this is a little tricky for me to do uh, and keep you in view, so just bear with me. But I'm going to maintain a firm grip with my left hand. I'm not going to fold it around my fingers or anything like that. And I'm going to hold my hand away from me. I don't want my hand getting pinched here. And to get maximum braking as I start, I'll, I'll bend the rope down. Now with my right hand, I'm going to go up and break that friction hitch. And so now the friction hitch is broken and I can begin my rappel. So when I fold the rope all the way down like this, I can hold it with just two fingers. As I go up, the friction level changes and I can kind of get a feel for what's optimal. But there's a small amount of twisting that goes into the rope, but it's not prohibitive. If at any time during the rappel I want to stop, for example, to get a platform, I'll just let my friction hitch rebind. This would rebind and I would just rebreak it. It's important to come down slowly. If you ever build up speed, that's a problem. Because to slow down, we might pull on the wrong thing. Our brain says squeeze harder, and we might squeeze harder on our friction hitch. And our friction hitch is actually the device we want to catch us. Okay, that's that's the deal and I'll just see, let you see now that's just a little bit warm I'll take it off I'll put it on one more time for you now I weigh 185 pounds so it's possible if you weigh more or weigh less you might get slightly different results it's possible that a really light person wouldn't need the wrap around the bottom, but that's why we always test and ensure we've got the right friction profile when testing from the ground. Okay, I'm going to pull down my rope and rig up the 9.5. Okay, so I've rigged up the 9.5 millimeter rope. I'm going to SRT up there real quick, and we're going to repeat the process. This time we're going to flip around and use the U-grooves. Okay, so for the 9.5 millimeter rope, we're going to want the Omega Pacific logo facing us that'll put the U grooves on my left side. So again, you know, you might prefer to do everything backwards, especially if you're left-handed. I just prefer to work my friction hitch with my right hand and use my left hand as my brake hand for the rope. So this is my loop of power cord closed in a hunter's bend. I'm going to girth hitch this onto the non logo side. Now, of course, I would have done this from the ground, right? But because uh, technically I could drop this right now, but you get the idea. So, so that becomes the tether. And I'm going to, on the other side, I will girth hitch that to my lineman's loop. And you could girth hitch it to anything you like. But now it's not droppable, right? Let that go. It's never a problem. Never going to drop my rappel device. And again, folks, 
there are folks who aren't comfortable with tying knots of any kind. Even the munter. There's been folks who said, gosh, I knew the munter. I knew it inside out. But then I got into the tree and I couldn't remember it. Well, maybe you might just have this device as a backup uh, if you prefer the munter. That's fine, too. I just want to give you options that are safe and that you can't drop. And this is forged aluminum. This is a, it's a very solid device, and so I'm comfortable recommending it, even if it's not my primary. I'm an old dog. I've been, I've been doing the munter for a long time. All right, so now I can, I can get this out of my way. I'm going to remove my, my redundancy, which is my JRB guard hitch foot loop. I'm temporarily non-redundant. I'll tuck that in my saddlebag. Grab the device. And I'm going to put it through this way. And that's going to expose the U-groove. Can you see the U-groove? And put my carabiner through in the same manner. Okay, give you a good look at that. If you, if you have the rope only around the carabiner, I find that to be inadequate friction. I have to do too much work with my left hand. I did a lot of testing. I even got some, some uh, rope burn doing that testing for you. So I, I don't recommend it, but I can't really simulate what it might be to weigh 100 pounds. It's possible that a 100-pound person, that might be adequate. That's why we do our spermentation at the ground. I'm going to put this through there, and I will remove all slack that I possibly can. All right, and I'm now going to reach up with my right hand and break my friction hitch while maintaining a firm grip here. If anything ever goes wrong during rappel, and you're using a friction hitch like the JRB Ascender hitch or like the Longhorn Agile hitch, you know it's always breakable under load and it'll catch you if there's a problem. But you're going to want to maintain a firm grip with your brake hand. All right, I'm breaking the friction hitch. And here we go. Rappel starts. The, the stiffer the rope you use, the, the choppier the rappel. And this is a little bit stiffer rope, but I have no, no trouble. You kind of want to keep moving, but just moving really slowly. My left hand just out of reach here. I keep down by my, my hip. I don't need gloves for this. If you needed gloves, well, then you probably need more resistance. Never be in a rush when you're in a rappel situation. Enjoy the ride. It's the funnest part of the climb. And I've got boots on the ground. The stiffer the rope you use, the, the choppier the rappel. And this is a little bit stiffer rope, but I have no, no trouble. I don't want to keep moving, just moving really slowly. My left hand just out of reach here. I keep down by my, my hip. I don't need gloves for this. If you needed gloves, well, then you probably need more resistance. Never be in a rush when you're in a rappel situation. Enjoy the ride funnest part of the climb. And I've got boots on the ground. Okay, so there you have it, the Omega Pacific SBG rappel device. Works in both single rope method, as I just demonstrated, or on a doubled rope. We'll do a separate clip on that. Uh, I have no trouble recommending this device. It is well made, but I also urge you to be careful in your approach to rappel. Work out all the kinks on the ground and make sure that no matter what your rappel device is, even in the case of the munter and the carabiner, it's never your only point of connection to the rope, such that if there's a problem with it, you can let go and your friction hitch is going to do its job and back you up.